Okay, this is a quick and informal video about deep foundation types. Okay? Deep foundations. Alright, so deep foundations are essentially, in quotes, called piles. Now we'll see in a second what the actual definition of a deep foundation is, but in general, the, the, the type of deep foundations that we use are essentially called piles. There are two types of piles. There are driven piles, and then there are drilled piles. Now, there are different names for, uh, for, for example, for drilled piles that are used interchangeably. Uh, for example, some people uh, use, instead of saying drilled piles, they would say something like drilled shafts or something like drilled caisson, something like that, okay? But in general, if you speak of driven piles and drilled piles, uh, I would say all, in, all geotechnical engineers that know what they're doing will, will understand you, okay? Now, driven piles are essentially driven into the ground, okay? They are piles that are driven or hammered, let's say, into the ground. So we're going to use that word, hammered, into the ground. Drilled piles are constructed, let's say, underground, okay? So we'll just write that. Constructed underground. All right. So, well, let's go. Actu let's actually describe what a pile looks like. Generally, a pile looks like this. This is uh, uh, regardless of whether it is driven or drilled. Okay. It essentially looks like a submerged column. Okay. So this is a ground surface, and this is the width or diameter of the pile, which, as you know from your foundation studies, generally the width of a footing or of a mat or of a pile is termed, uh, or the letter B is used to term the width, okay? So the letter B, capital B, okay? A pile has a length D, which is the embed embedment length, right? Okay, and essentially that's what it looks like. Generally, um, I would say, hmm, I would say most piles. I would just say this, even though I don't really know the statistics. But I would say, I would guess that most piles are circular in cross section. So this right here, if you were to look at it from the top, it would be something like that. Okay, and the diameter is B. But you could have piles that are uh, that have different cross sectional shapes. It could be a square pile or even uh, maybe an octagonal pile, etc. Okay? All right. Let's go back to the driven versus drilled. So I'm going to just move this up. Well, clearly, um, the load, the axial load on the pile is applied as denoted by that arrow, right? This is the column load, for example. Column axial load P. All right. Well, let's go back to the drilled versus driven. So a driven pile. This is, remember, this is very quick. There's a lot of stuff to read about this, uh, the types of piles, etc. And this is very general, but I think it's the fundamental stuff. Okay, so a driven pile is constructed outside of the ground, okay? outside, let's say, okay? So basically, um, you could take, for example, a light post, imagine a concrete light post, the ones that are used, let's say, if you have like a, you know, a roadway, the cars are going into the, right? <laughs> Sorry, but let's say these are the lights. So the car is coming out of the page like this, okay? So we have light posts. which are basically columns with a light on top, right? To, to provide light to the, to the uh, 
to the street. Okay, if you take this light post and you hammer it into the ground, you create a driven pile. Okay, so what I'm trying to say here is that you can take something that is already constructed or you can construct it on purpose to then drive it or hammer it into the ground to create a pile. Okay? You could take a steel pipe, for example, and do the same, or an eye section. Okay? Anyway, these are constructed outside of the ground and then hammered in. I already wrote this, but okay. Hammered in. So, what does that mean? Well, there are um, typically very large equipment that are taken to the site, and this equipment holds the pile vertical, okay? So the equipment may look almost like a, you know, one of those heavy construction equipment, etc. It has a holder, this is the ground surface, there's a person here maybe You know, driving this thing. Okay, sorry for the for the little mess, but there's a holder here that places the pile on the spot. These are trees, okay, let's say around surface, right? Where it's going to be driven. And then in here, this is very rough, but if you go on YouTube, you could just type in driven pile installation or something like that and you will see obviously very nice videos uh, on how this is done but essentially this machine holds the pile vertical and then this hammer is raised and then um, released so that it actually hits the top of the pile and the pile is literally hammered into the ground just like a nail would if you hammer it with a wood hammer you know, a, a wood nail, if you hammer it into a piece of wood, for example. Same thing, same concept. In some cases, I would say most cases, this part here vibrates. So there's vibration incurred, okay? And generally, when you have coarse grain soils, even fine grain soils, uh, if you vibrate the pile while you're hitting it, then it's most of, the machine is more effective in being able to drive the pile or place the pile into the ground, right? So the pile comes in and in and in, and then eventually it's down here, okay? There is generally a cushion that is placed at the top so that the hammer does not break the top of the pile when it's hitting it, okay? So driven piles are essentially constructed this way. All right, now, a few things. One, this stuff is loud. Okay, so if you have a project where you're going to construct a building, let's say next to a hospital, okay, or, or something like that, um, generally you would prefer perhaps not to use driven pile, um, driven piles because then it would create a lot of noise, etc. Right? So these are this is one of the kind of disadvantages of let's say driven piles. Um, number two. Generally, this is a fast installation. So this is kind of like a disadvantage. This one is an advantage. Because remember that fast construction means, uh, generally means that we're making more money than if we construct slowly. All right, let's talk now about drilled piles. Drilled piles are piles that are essentially are constructed in the ground. So essentially what you want to end up with is a, essentially a concrete column, generally circular, again, in cross-section, okay, that is basically submerged in the ground. Reinforced concrete, which means that it has a rebar cage. Okay, now there are various ways in which this can be achieved. So, there are piles that are, for example, constructed as follows. You dig a hole, and the hole is dug with what's called an auger, which is essentially a large drill bit, as, as in the drill bit that you would have in the hand drill, okay, but it looks a little bit different. It's wider with um, flatter 
wings, okay, than a, than a hand drill drill bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload some videos um, uh, or I'm, I'm going to provide some links to videos that, that show you how this is done, okay, and show you augers, etc. But basically you dig a hole, okay, you fill it with concrete, and then you insert a rebar cage okay that has been constructed outside okay you insert it in dip it into the concrete okay so there are there are different ways that again that this is done uh, the major challenges are keeping the hole open okay so for that To keep the, door, the hole open, um, there are essentially two things that are done. One is to use a slurry and or the other one, which is to use a casing. Okay, a casing is essentially a steel tube that is pushed in so that it creates the sides of the hole so that the, the, soil, the soil doesn't cave in. Okay. And a slurry is essentially a mixture of different materials. Predominantly, uh, slurries have a clay that is called bentonite. Although there are other slurries that are that contain polymers. And what slurries are, a slurry essentially is a um, a mixture of water, polymer. Sometimes, sometimes they even have oil, um, bentonite, etc., into a gel. And a gel or a gel-like, kind of like a viscous substance or fluid that then is um, poured into the hole somehow, there are different ways, and it keeps the hole open. Okay, so essentially that's that's in, in, in a, rough, a rough sketch. This is a rough sketch of drill piles. Um, again, I'm going to provide some links to videos that, I'm gonna, that are going to show you exactly how this is done. Time lapses and things by different companies. Um, I'll provide that, but just to finish up here, essentially the relative or the advantage of, of this type of situation or type of pile is that it's silent relative to the hammered or driven pile, okay? Also, the very large capacity. And the reason is that they can be made very, very large. The B can be huge. Okay, um, and I'll provide some videos on that or links to. And then uh, number three is essentially that um, these are more time consuming, so it's slow construction, let's say, relatively. That is relative to driven piles, slow construction. Um, but there are different companies that do this very quickly, so. You know, that all depends on the, the cost and the cost-benefit ratio for the whole project. All right.